Hi, my name is Jeff Wong. It's a pleasure for me to participate in this symposium. So I'm going to talk to you about cell-based therapies for disc regeneration. And this is a, a topic that I think is very, very uh, sort of hot at the current time. Uh, these are my disclosures. I don't think this is going to affect anything that I'm about to talk to you today. So stem cells, very hot topic. Um, I can tell you right now that the evidence is still lacking that there's a reliable way to regenerate the disc using stem cells. Uh, however, uh, this has generated a lot of controversy in the biological realm because a lot of people are using this as a marketing tool because the word stem cells excites practitioners, it excites patients. And I think we all believe that in the future, we'll probably be using some type of stem cell treatment to hopefully treat some of our spinal disorders. It's just that right now it's in the very early stages. And when you search the internet, and I just Googled a bunch of uh, different places that are offering things. And so my disclaimer is I'm not trying to uh, sort of denigrate any one, any one institution, uh, but there are a lot of different institutions out there internationally, nationally, talking about stem cell treatments uh, for the spine and other conditions. And I think a lot of patients are seeing these advertisements and are probably quite excited and thinking that this is sort of the latest and the greatest treatment. And we do think that in the future, this is currently um, something we're excited about, but I, I just don't think we have the evidence to support it currently right now. Obviously, there's uh, celebrities here that are endorsing it, and, and so a lot of people are very excited about it. So I want to talk about three different things. I want to talk about the environment within the disc. I want to talk about some of the theoretical benefits and why we're even pursuing this as a, as a future treatment. And then I want to finish with the current evidence, which I can tell you right now is pretty lacking. So first, the environment. You know, this is a very difficult thing to do, regenerate the disc. If we're trying to do a spinal fusion, we're just trying to form one tissue, which is bone, right? And if you're trying to form a fusion, you just want bone formation. The issue with the disc is that there are at least three different structures we have to consider. We have to consider the nucleus pulposus, the annulus fibrosus, and the cartilaginous end plates. And I think any strategy that's going to encompass sort of regenerating the entire disc, you have to think about all these three different distinct anatomical structures, which makes it much more difficult, right? So that's number one. Uh, number two, when we're talking about degenerative discs, because right now we're not intervening in healthy discs, but the, de the degenerative disc is a really bad environment, right? It, it's um, a very bad environment to, to just inject stem cells because there's uh, subchondral edema, uh, which can affect the nutrition. There's low oxygen tension, there's low pH. It's not a great environment for us to just take, be taking a lot of cells that are alive and they require all these nutri nutrients and putting them in an environment where it's very low and they're competing for resources. So it's not a great environment right now to be injecting cells. The other thing is that it's, it's one of the largest avascular structures in the body. There's no blood supply to the disc. And when you look on the left of the screen, maybe when we were young, there's some blood supply maybe to the peripheral parts of the disc. Uh, by, the, by the time we get to the, be an adult, which is on the far right side of the screen, there's just no direct blood supply to the disc. And so again, it's not a great environment when there's low oxygen, low, low nutrition. The other thing is that when we're talking about degenerative discs, we're talking about just a bad inflammatory environment, right? There's the IL-1, uh, IL IL-6, uh, IL these inflammatory mediators, there's uh, gamma interferon, there's TNF-alpha. These are all inflammatory mediators and these cytokines, it just creates a very bad environment. Again, injecting disc cells that need to thrive uh, into this environment, you know, it just may not make a lot of sense. And, and the other thing is that um, we talk about it being a bad environment, but how are we going to get the cells in there? Well, depending on the size of the needle you use, you can cause trauma to the discs. So we all know taking a, a, in an animal, injecting a disc and just putting a needle in the disc can, can start disc de degeneration. So we have to wonder how we're gonna deliver these cells. Obviously it's gonna have to be through a very small needle, but still doing repeated injections of these, of these discs or these factors into the disc, that alone can cause some damage to the disc. And then we have to ask ourselves, if we are regenerating the disc, are we getting rid of pain? Because if we're just regenerating the disc, we're making the x-rays and the MRIs look better, but we're not taking care of pain or the symptoms that are coming from the disc, then are we really doing the patient any benefit? Or are we just kind of treating uh, radiological finding? And so the degenerative disc also has different stages. And we know from the early stages, 
maybe that's something we can regenerate. But when you get to the late stages, the biomechanics are probably altered. So I would say that people agree that in the early stages, maybe we can do some biology. But in the later stages, there's such altered biomechanics, we're probably gonna need some type of mechanical device along with the biologic uh, regeneration. And certainly the disc cells them by themselves, injecting them into a sort of a grade five degenerative disc where the biomechanics are already altered uh, is probably not gonna, gonna work in the future. Now, the second thing is the theoretical benefits because at least in theory, it makes a lot of sense, right? What could stem cells do? Well, they could augment the supply of viable cells uh, it, maybe they could reduce inflammation, reduce the breakdown of the disc, and maybe they can actually produce some of the products and actually produce more of the nutrition and the, and the structures of the disc um, that the discs that are currently there are not able to do, and maybe prevent the breakdown of the existing structure. And that would be the ultimate goal of stem cell therapy or uh, use, using uh, cells in the disc. Now, the other problem though, is that we talk about some very difficult environments, right? It's questionable whether when we get to later stages of disc degeneration, if, if the stem cells are really going to help. Um, if you've already uh, damaged the disc, maybe a, a patient has already had a discectomy, um, and, and maybe we need some type of total disc that's biological that can counteract some of the altered biomechanics. But we also know that even if we were to treat that, we can't get rid of all the other things that lead to degeneration, age, comorbidities, mechanical factors, right? Say you're doing squats all the time, you're putting all this stress on the disc. The, the lifestyle changes and even genetics, we know plays a big part of this. And we're not gonna alter that just by st sticking stem cells in there. So I do think that there are strategies that are theoretically good for regenerating the matrix of the disc, but also we have to think about some of the environmental factors that if we're gonna have long sustained regenerative discs. And then I kind of wanna finish with the current evidence. And what I alluded to before is that there's just not a lot of good evidence right now. However, I think we have to get the evidence and I think we're, we're at the early stages. Now we talked about how this is a very vicious cycle, right? It's a bad environment, it's low pH, uh, it's got a lot of inflammatory mediators and, and then the cells break down uh, and the cells are competing uh, for, for all the nutrition. And so it's not a great environment to be injecting cells. It's not a great environment for the current um, cells that are in there. So what really makes it difficult is that we know that there's a lot of spine degeneration in environmental factors. Uh, we have to translate the bench results to clinical practice. You know, there's a lot of research out there uh, in basic science, but how do we get that into clinical trials? And there's a lot of regulatory issues and there have been a lot of biologics that have quite frankly failed. And so I think a lot of people are worried about the cost, the funding, how are we gonna get these studies through the FDA? And so those are really big hurdles that anyone who comes up with the strategy is gonna to have to face. Now, if you look at different cells that we could be potentially using for disc regeneration, there's notochordal cells or intervertebral cells. We know that there are some stem cells that are just inherently in the disc. Maybe we can activate those cells. And then there are stem cells from various different sources like adipose tissue, bone marrow, and things like that. And if you look at the basic science literature or even do a PubMed research, there's a ton of research out there current that's real good basic science data. And that's why I do think that we all feel that it's gonna be promising for the future. The problem is, is that very few of those translate into clinical trials, right? And how do we take stem cells, which you see on the right that are dividing, they're renewing, they uh, can become tissue specific, and how do we transform them into the disc cells on the left and also get rid of pain? And that's, that's the real problem because a lot of these stem cells are undifferentiated and depending on the environment, they can differentiate into fibroblasts. They may not make it into intervertebral disc cells. And that's one of the current challenges that we currently face. Now, if we look at the current evidence, there's not a lot of evidence, but there are some at least preliminary studies showing that uh, using allogeneic stem cells might be something of use for the future. And I think we need to see the results of these studies. There are some that are published, very small numbers of patients, small series, um, and some of them are just sort of treatments, some are randomized controlled trials. This is a paper that we published last year, which kind of looked at all the cell therapy, sort of a meta-analysis, sort of a systemic, systematic review. And what we found is that um, if you look at the clinical studies based on clinic, clinic, uh, a study design, there's mostly case series, uh, single arm registry studies, there's one pilot study, and there's one randomized control study. So there's not a lot of studies that are out there, right? And if you look at uh, the cell-based therapies, the vast majority um, are going to be autologous. Uh, there, there are two studies that are allogeneic, but the six are, are autologous. So again, small numbers of studies using different types of cells. 
If you look at the clinical evidence for cell-based theories currently, right now, there's some early preliminary data. If you look at some of the results, they're not overwhelmingly impressive, but they are promising. And I do think that perhaps in the future, they, they may show some merit. But currently, there's just not enough data out there. There's small numbers of patients, small sample size, um, and we're just not seeing enough, enough research out there. So, so right now, the evidence just doesn't exist. And, and certainly, there are clinical trials that are being applied for. And we, I, I certainly think this is the future. And I certainly think that uh, maybe in the future, this will happen. I just don't think we're there now, but it's very, very promising. Looking at some of these uh, proposed studies, I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, a few facts. Um, even if you look at animal discs, they have more cells than human discs. Uh, you can only support a certain number of cells within that environment that we talked about in the human cell. So the stem cells that we do use have to be efficient, right? Um, they can produce some of the structures of the disc, but it would take several decades for stem cells to restore just 25% of the disc tissue. So we're talking, uh, these stem cells, I, I, there's just a lot of evidence, a lot of hurdles to overcome. <laughs>